Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in Equestria Street War using patch 1.92 Eagles. Now, at the time of this recording, this patch I don't believe is out just yet. But I was contacted by the devs and if and they asked if I'd like to put it on the channel, and I said, sure, why not? I thought it'd be a lot of fun. But if you'd like to read about the Kingdom of Aquilia, the failed republic, please go right ahead. As you saw, we are on historical as well. We're using the mods uh, Equestria War. State Transfer Tool Mod, as well as Player Lead Conferences, but let's begin with a focus. Now, I set this on Historical, and I don't know a whole ton about Equestria War, but I'm still learning. But I did want to go with Historical, and I think Fight for Your Freedom is Historical, or at least that's what the AI chose when I observed this off-screen. We, the people of Aquilia, must rise up in defense of our Republican ideals. We cannot let a monarchic tyrant dictate our freedoms and our way of life. We must defend our beliefs, if unto death, if we must. And we have three whole research slots. And I already know people in the comments are going to say, you should focus more, or focus a little bit, on your unique race text. And I'm going to do that, and then we'll grab some more research speed after this. So, I just wanted to show everyone there at the beginning, um, that we are on patch 1.9, the beta of 1.9. Actually, the mod crashed, just, I think it was just a random crash when I was playing this earlier off, off screen by myself. But let's see, we have Gabriel Duval, very cool. Uh, leader experience, why not? And then we have some tanks, or at least a tank division, and some motorized, cool. Uh, what do we want? And let's see what we're going to build up. I always like some civvies to begin with. And then if we have time, we'll get some millies because I've already seen how the war is going to pretty much go. Uh, to a degree, sort of. So let's get pushing as fast and as hard as we can. Usually I set everything else up off screen as you, if you follow my channel, you know I do that as much as I possibly can. So there you go. And, oh, we do not need to see about that there, Reich. All right. Uh, oh boy. Oh, this doesn't look great. No. Level one. I, I'm not even going to bother level one stuff. Nope. Cool. And do everything here. Oh, that's okay. And this stuff is... Actually, I'll make that. Why not? We'll make that. Cool. We should be good to go. God, the mod can run really fast. I love it. I love how fast this mod can run. But Republican Toast. Today, the annual Fin de Hever banquet was held in Barol. As in tradition, the local nobility, landowners, and various griffs of note meant to celebrate the end of winter and to a prosperous year of harvest, a major social event in itself. It is also a semi-political gathering, as Barol remains a bastion of republicanism despite repression, with many republicans attending the gathering, but so far, they've been forced to remain closeted. Few even know or knew that other like-minded griffs attended. Traditional commands that the dinner is rhythmed by various toasts. Attendees can freely call it a drink for various causes in honor of certain person, but also on political topics. While the evening started with several toasts to the king's good health and various local causes, a slight change occurred later on. A local noble, known for being critical of the king, raised his glass to the needed reforms of Aquilia. While tipsy attendees cheered and drank, many Republicans saw it as a hint. As the evening went on, Republican attendees started subverting the event. Toasts were being raised to liberty, equality, and fraternity. As no griff seemed to react badly or truly realize, Republican asserted themselves, raising their glasses to universal suffrage and, even more surprisingly, the betterment of workers' conditions and rights. With each cheer, Republicans recognized each other. The toasts ended without incidents, and as the people began to mingle again, the Barol Republican elites met and discovered that the fire of the revolution had been snuffed out in their city. To liberty, and if you don't know, this is very heavily inspired by, I think, the French and the French Revolution. Um, as much as I kind of understood from this, but man, look how fast we are blazing through this. I love it, love it, love it. But we're going to fight for our freedoms. The Cold Street Summit to the Ashes now. Uh, focus. So with this one, basically we'll have a war within a year. So we got to be ready for that. We get more political power, which is nice. Completely focus to support the revolutions in Pridea, Vivovia, Vinovia, and Harmony. Ooh, extra 5,000 infantry equipment upon the start of the revolution. Decreased Republican support in the Duchy of Rila. Ooh, ooh, I don't know if that's good. The Children of the Revolution spawn three more units of Revolutionary Guard. That's not bad. I mean, as long as we win the war, that's the most important thing. I'm not sure how much this would do. Uh, let's see. Into the Lair of the Beast. Decrease Republican support in, the, in those regions. 80% chance of capturing King Morissette upon the start of the Revolution. That sounds like a lot of fun. Ooh. Four guards. Or four, uh, convince Cecilia Duterte and Gabriel Duval to join the Revolution. Well, I kind of want to get... At least Pridea, because Pridea here is right next to us, and that'd be really nice to have, so we don't have to focus on this entire front here, but it's not that bad if they don't join us. So let's do, let's focus on them first, and then do all of this stuff, and if we have time, we'll go down here as well. I mean, other than that, we, there's nothing else we can really do. 
So we're locked out of other focuses, but we'll see what happens once we get from the ashes. Once a bright spot of revolutionary fervor for the young republic, a Paradia fell back into royal claws after Baron Dennis de Scret mercilessly shelled the city with his navy and stormed the dockyards with his marines, capturing and subsequently executing hundreds of revolutionaries. From the ashes of liberty, a new revolution will rise in Paradia. So we can come over here and you can borrow from Floina, you can trade with Scottfall, it's pretty normal. We also have uh, let's see, monarchy support in the Duchy of Rila. Uh, revolutionary support is pretty high in Rila right now, up here. Organize a bombing. Um, well, if you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Wow, there's a lot. So, spread the word. As much as I love arming and spreading the words, organizing a bombing sounds kind of wild. I see 57%, 43%. The fire rises. The second revolution will come eventually. War propaganda, pretty normal political actions. Oh, we have some rubber we can get. We can kind of wait on all that stuff. Is there anyone we can grab right now here? Industrialist, controversial rider. I kind of like that. Oh, you can get slightly some more daily compliance gain as well. Workers' war support. I like the political power. It's only 5%, though. The exiled colonel's demise. News have come from Fazera. The body of Jean Pat Patissier was found this morning in the Fereza Cemetery. A bullet lodged in a skull. While some Republicans in exile swiftly claimed it was a monarchist assassination, the truth quickly emerged. The gun used was found nearby and Patissier's corpse was laying next to a Madame Maguerta de Bonagriff's grave, his well-known mistress. It was quickly concluded that he committed suicide out of grief for his lover. Jean Patissier was one of the few military colonels who lived through the revolution without getting compromised with either side after the terror. He cultivated links with the Republic who saw him in hopes of one of for a second revolution, while at the same time gaining significant influence within the army. His Republican dealings, sincere or not, eventually leaked, and the government prepared for an insurgency. The insurgency never actually materialized, as he got spooked and fled the country with his mistress. His popularity collapsed after that, though. He will now forevermore be known as the colonel who lacked courage, but not love. Alas, we are robbed from punishing this trait ourselves. That is an awesome picture. I love that. I love the pickle hobble, too. Oh, so nice. Whoa, Jean. That looks pretty good. Even more compliance growth speed. That's pretty good. The Appellation de Original Authentifé. Obviously, I don't speak French, but it is what it is. After years of careful negotiation between our Ministry of Agriculture, Farmers, and Wine Distributors, our government has established Appellation de Original Authentifié, or APA for short. The APA creates geological areas in which we wine production, respecting a certain tradition of craft and vine cultivation, will receive an official label with a specific name. These names include the famous Chateau Barreau, Côte de... Viesimen, Cuvée de Roy, Cru de Wasquip, or Rilac. Wine sold under these names would be officially authentified and could be consumed with complete trust in its Aquilian quality. The APA system has been combined with traditional tariffs on imported wines to further favor our local production. Various institutions such as the Académie Royale du Vin d'Aquilé and the Revue des Vins or the Comité Royal de Propaganda Viticole have also been founded to both control and promote Aquilian wines for decades now. The wine trade has seen a significant loss in both quality and price. While some applaud the second part, it has proven to be a disaster for our farmers and many of our vineyard owners. Some call the APA system a draconian measure. However, Jean Capus, who has led the movement in favor of it, painted a dire picture of our wine production. He has talked about fine Aquilian wine being mixed with poorer wines mass-produced in Wing Body, New Maryland, Toulouse, or Minotauria, and sold as Aquilian or poor wine spiked with chemicals and alcohol, all products which would only serve to tarnish real Aquilian vintage. Some foreign wine traders have strongly protested against the measure, calling it discriminatory and arbitrary, and communists have attacked the APA as a bourgeois construct designed to protect noble-owned vineyards at the expense of the average grifts. Uh, Sante et un Aquilian, s'il vous plaît? That's, the only, that's one of the very little bit of French I remember from taking that in high school. Oh my goodness. Uh, but I would like to get someone here. 5% political power, not really worth it. 10% though, now we're talking. With 10%, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good for 10%. Bicolini becomes Prime Minister. The Emperor is dead. Stoke the memories of the Commune. The autonomous Commune of Pride is a fond but distant memory for many of the Griffins and Pride are yearning for freedom. Finding every Republican printer in the Barony give them a message to print. The Commune must be assembled once more. And actually, how what, what is the support down there? Westkeep, uh, Rila, and Pride. Yes. Oh, 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 do we really want to do that one? Oh, it's 25%. Oh, you know what? Oh, man, I, I know we did this one. Maybe we want to wait for Pridea. It's 75%. I should have realized that earlier. And that's Barony of, uh, Barony of Pridea. Oh, boy. Land of Wine and Traders. V Vino Via. Actually, Vino Vino might be better. Vino Via, probably. Because 25% is just not good enough. 75% in Rilla is really good. Uh, 52, 58%. All right. And wait. Ooh, do they not have something down there? Huh. 
Uh, that seems very odd. Uh, all the others do. Maybe I just don't understand this. Um, if that's the case, then, I would love to do that. We're gonna wait, though. <sighs> to support the revolutionaries. Okay, now we can support the revolutionaries with this one. The revolution was sabotaged from within by weak revolutionary leaders in Vino Viva. Uh, who laid down their arms under Duke Gafadir's rule after hearing just a few measly speeches. If we want the next revolution to succeed, we will have to become more involved in Vinovia than last time. Actually, you know what? It makes more sense of doing this one first. So, even though I read it, we want to lower the support and then raise it back up with all this stuff. So, the head of the snake. Cut off the head of the snake and you'll kill the wretched beast. King Moraset is a head of the monarchist, and as such, he must be the first to die. It's time to devote everything we can to ensuring Moraset dies with the rest of the vile line. The discreets or discrets shall not escape the guillotine a second time. So yeah, I think I want to get some more political power first. I, I just, I love political power. And that's, instead of like, yeah, it's not, is it worth it right now? Probably not. And he's a controversial writer. He probably, hopefully, won't die by the time we win the revolution. So, yeah. You get basically 10% is really just 0 0.2, realistically, at least in my mind. So we're currently at 0.39. If we do this, we click on him, we get 0.55. So it's not 0.2, but it's, it's closer. And we're going to use him in the entire campaign, so whatever. Negligible, probably nice. The breakup of the guilds in Viesima. Today, the gla Glassmakers Guild, known as the Corporation, Corporation des Veres de Vizima, has broken up after several heated meetings. The news has come as a shock to many in Vizima, as the corporation is one of the oldest institutions and a shining beacon of its culture. The guild used to assemble both workers and owners of the glass industry in a spirit of craft grift solidarity, a throwback to an era where ideas of class and social questions were unheard of. Some in Vizima say the breakup was long overdue as the glass industry owners were becoming more and more powerful within it. The traditional solidarity and craft uh, ship culture were withering under the strain caused by mechanization after the revolution. The writings of Caramel Marx also left their mark. For years now, glassmakers were increasingly identifying as proletarian workers whose interests were fundamentally at odds with the wealthier guild members. For a time, guild members attempted to soften the divide by making deals to improve working conditions. Unfortunately for them, though, the ideological radicalization of the time gradually degraded the willingness to make such piecemeal contracts. Both workers refused to adhere to the system and glasswork owners ceased to rely on the apprenticeship system and started to use wage labor under contract outside the guild system. The remaining members saw the writing on the wall and voted to disband, the first vote to pass the guild assembly in two years. Another victim of this era of radicals and iconoclasts. Oh boy. But let's go with the, the tools of the revolution. Let's go with the Royal Deer Connection. 60% chance of capturing the king upon the start of the revolution. Although the MP are supposedly supporters of the crown, their leader, Leonardo Rodier, harbors secret Republican sympathies. We must work together with Rodier to infiltrate and supplant King Morissette's... Uh, oh, I always say this, this word wrong. Gendarme? 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 And Achillea? Giving us a better chance of removing the king's head from his body. Oh, off with his head. And now we can probably do some bombings. Uh, see, 60% is not bad in Westkeep. Of course, we want to make sure that Vino Villa is going to be coming with it. Go with us. Real is looking pretty good, though. And this, not so much. 18, oh, that's disgusting. Disgusting. Which I might try to focus on first in the, when the war starts. But the Civil War and Longsword, the glassmaker strike of uh, Vizima. A major strike erupted in the Fabrique Verreria d'Aquilia in Vizima. The company is known for its difficult working conditions and cynical methods used by its owner, Charles de Vassis. The Fabrique Verreria notably pays its workers weekly and bars around the factory, which are owned by de Vassis himself. The system has caused terrible situations for Gress drinking their paycheck and subverting camaraderie between workers into a vicious circle of al alcoholism. The Fabrique's founder, the industrialist Charles de Vassis, left the guild make Glassmaker Guild for years ago, and is now a leading voice against communism in Vizima. Refusing to negotiate, he has aggressively recruited Severnian pony refugees to replace the strikers. They also employ the service of a Severnian paramilitary group composed of former soldiers and policemen who fought against or fought the Stalingrad Revolution. These ponies were tasked with protecting the workers and disbanding their picket lines around a factory. The strikers obviously react with anger and fights to become a daily occurrence around the factory, worrying. Oh boy. Um, okay, so when it says, like, 80, almost, it's almost 80%, so that's not bad, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see what happens, I want to do it down here, because 63% is not as good as 79%, so let's do support Colette, oh, or target the monarchists, expand the cells. I kind of want to expand the cells, that sounds like the most fun. More so than General Rainey's intervention, the state of anarchy that ruled Westkeep during the revolution led to the march's downfall and return to the kingdom. This time around, we shall make sure our revolutionary cells are larger, better equipped, and better trained. Westkeep will no longer yield so easily to the monarchist armies this time around. Very cool. Mil mil military training would be nice, but we can wait. 
the Vaisian bloodbath. Oh boy. The strike of the Fabrique, Vereria, D'Achilia, and Visma has taken for a turn for the worse. Fights became so violent that the local police was forced to act as a peacekeeping force between the Severnayan strikebreakers and the strikers as their fights extended beyond the limits of the factories. Sabotage attempts in the Fabrique caused an ever more damages, and the bar owners owned the bars owned by devices became targets of arsonists. Yesterday, it all came to a head when a team of strikers stormed Charles Devas's uh, mansion on the outskirts of town. Armed with smuggled guns, they massacred the ponies protecting the mansion and took him hostage. In a moment of lucidity, lucidity the strikers allowed Devasis and his family to flee the scene, claiming they were only interested in forcing Devasis to finally agree to a fair deal. The police were alerted and quickly surrounded the mansion. Negotiations fell apart as the police unit was led by a political friend of Devasis, whose emotions and anti communist opinions got the better of him. Shots were fired and the police stormed the building. It was unclear what happened, though. The chaotic scene left the strikers, the Severnayam pony guards, several servants accused of helping the ha hostage makers five police griffs and Devasis himself dead. The bloodbath continued to cause the strike to fall apart after strikers split between supporters and opponents of the attack. The leader of the strike and supporters were arrested under charge of terrorism. They all prefer to break rather than bend. Oh well. Things are not well here. Just like my back. Oh boy. Oh. Crack my back. Oh baby. Oh anyways. <clears throat> so we did one of these. Can we keep doing more? Oh maybe not. Support Colette? Actually, you know what? At 79%, I want to organize a bombing. Michael Descrit is a collector of the fine arts. Most of these arts, however, are statues of himself. He's set to receive a new piece to his private collection soon, and the sculptor's known revolutionary sympathizer. Perhaps we can arrange a little present to be included with Michael's newest statue. Ooh, kaboom. It's fun making bombs. Don't quote me on that. Spying on spies? Ooh, 70% chance we can do that? Yes. The King spies the Josette, or Jouette. Are his eyes and ears in the streets, and they've rooted out and executed dozens of upstart revolutionary cells over the past four years. Keeping a better eye on the Chouette should keep us more warning when a raid is imminent, and better yet, track the king's movements. And we have the National Spirit Memories of the Republic, which is hurting us quite a bit. And we also have the Legacy of Colbert, which is not good either. The Death of Marshal Bertolot. Marshal Bertolot, the griffin most responsible for the destruction of the First Aquilian Republic and the restoration of the Morisac Discret to the throne of Aquilia, passed away today at the age of 87. The old marshal was found dead in his manor in Viesma by one of his servants. A quick examination proved that Bertolot had passed away naturally, and a funeral procession was organized by his family and friends. Although Bertolot is seen as a hero by some Aquilians, the majority of her people considered him a scoundrel and a lackey of the Discret family, thus making him both and his death a deeply dividing matter. Rest in peace, old friend. Goodbye, senor. Or Monsieur, I should really say Monsieur, since we are kind of French French. Summer Games Celebration, Crystal Fair, very, very nice. I suppose we could be training these guys, but then again, I don't think we have enough tanks. Actually, I didn't even set any of this stuff up, did I? No, I didn't. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we have that. We have. We need some motorized. We probably need some art, more artillery, but get some anti-air. Get some, like, tanks. Get some early fighters. I guess we're going to go with bombers. And do have a cup of coffee that I forgot about. Oh, boy. But first, some basic machine tools. So thank you. And we'll go disperse because I like to disperse the most. I don't know why. I have a problem. Spying on the spies and the tools of the revolution. If we're going to see the monarchists exterminated, we need rifles and lots of them. Our collaborators will begin smuggling weapons into the capital, which will greatly strengthen our position at the cost of weakening other revolutionary cells elsewhere in the kingdom. Oh, well, the daring Dubok. Oh, very nice. We get 5,000 extra infantry equipment, which we will probably need. Especially if we want to expand. Um, <clears throat> expand what? Our divisions. Divisions. Division templates. Uh, spread the word, 70% is pretty good. Spread the word. A revolution cannot be born if no griffins are aware that it is time to take up the torch. We shall enlist the aid of every printer we can find in Rila who believes in the Republic. With their help, we shall soon put revolution back on the beaks of every griffin in Rila and fill up the revolutionary clubs with zealous new members ready to fight and die for the freedoms. Hope we're doing well with this. Because we still have 64% over there too. So, we'll see. And, you know what? We'll at least finish as much as we possibly can here, as possible. And... Arm the clubs. A revolution cannot succeed on fiery speeches and passionate protests alone. If we're to plot <clears throat> the downfall of the monarchy, we must make sure all of our members are armed and ready to fight. It is time to ensure that the clubs throughout Rita or Rila are ready to stand with us when the time comes and bring us the heads of every noble that escaped our wrath in the t first time around. Our friends in the Greifwaldians. Colonel Claudet of Greifwald, who has recently sent a diplomatic mission to Aquilia, has seen fit Aquila. Aquilia? Why do I keep saying Aquilia? It's Aquila. I think has seen it fit to propose that we help further the economic ties by opening up trade between us and its small nation. Setting how much we would curb the Empire's influence in the region, what should we do? Ignore the Empire, we accept? That would be a waste of money? Hmm, that sucks. We'll do it. Why not? 
tools of the revolution and the children of the revolution. Once we have guns, we need griffins to wield them on the field of battle. S send the call throughout the kingdom. We must summon revolutionaries from the far corners of Aquilia and bring them here to the capital. The city of lights must be taken and preserved at all costs if the revolution is to succeed. Also, if I'm saying things wrong and in incorrectly, please let me know in the comments below how to actually pronounce things. Also, if the audio is mixed up or you can't hear the audio or it's too loud or whatever, please also let me know in the comments below at any time. It's just... I'm experimenting with some more stuff. Ah, construction one. Very nice. Oh, uh, that's not bad. It's still th year 1007, so... Uh, artillery... Mm, let's not do that. Let's get this one first. We could do artillery, but we're gonna wait. And actually, are you guys done yet? No, I don't do that. There you go. Keep training until you don't need to. So we're gonna start with no fuel. Maybe that's not a good thing, but the... Ooh, into the lair of the beast. Yeah, let's do that one. Without a plan in place to capture King Morissette, he will surely slip through our claws once more. We must be ready to assault his palace when the next revolution begins. Scouting the grounds and assembling a team of experienced revolutionaries will greatly improve our chances. 80% chance of capturing him. That'd be nice. New friends. Convince Cecilia to join us. Stoke the fire. The Second Republic. Nice. I think we'll do this one next. Because you do get a little bit, a sliver more political power, so that's pretty nice as well. That's a 50 day focus. Oh man, we are running out of time. I don't know if we can do that. To join the revolution. Actually, uh, well, uh, as much as I want to do that one, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get to that one then. Oh, I should have not done from the ashes then. Uh, I guess we'll form a few friends. Uh, both got political power. They join the revolution. I want four units just in case. Stoke the fire. Discontent is rife within the king's army, and many of the soldiers openly bemoan his rule. If we can stoke the fires of the revolution in their hearts, we may be able to convince them to abandon the king and join the new republic. That's going to cost us more political power, but I'd rather have divisions just in case. You just never know. Good, good, good. The Blue Moon Festival. Thank you. I'm not... Oh, wait. That was wrong to do. Whatever. Today, griffins around the world gather to celebrate the annual annual Blue Moon Festival. Originating in Griffinstone, this traditional winter holiday is said to be the only time of year when griffins are nice to each other. Families put aside their feuds for a day and come together to exchange gifts, decorate their houses, and enjoy a delicious meal consisting of griffin scones, warm eggnog, and gold gruel. Even during wartime, griffins prefer to take a break from the fighting and are often granted leave so they can visit their homes. While sharing much in common, the celebration differs not from, from the equestrian hearth, warming eve, by having religious connotations not commemorating a historical event and lacking theater plays. It is said that the festival is a celebration of all griffin gods and divine unity in the pantheon, especially between the three main gods, Boreas, Ayr, and Arcturus. Over the years, the Arcanites have tried to push the event to focus on the three main deities alone, but especially in the per peripheral regions. Lesser deities are still venerated. Indeed, different griffin communities celebrate the festival in different ways, with traditions becoming more exotic the further away from Griffinstone you go. In recent times, the festival's religious importance has eroded, and it is becoming primarily a cultural event, celebrating the common heritage of griffin kind, a toast to family and unity. And, more speed because we can't, even though we're going to fall apart in civil war. Actually, quite soon, actually. Quite soon. If that's the case, yeah, you guys just go home. Winter Moon Celebration, very nice. Oh, can we at least get this focus done before war breaks out? We probably This is probably the last thing we can do. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, soak the fire. Alright. I mean, we can read a few new friends. The King's army is full of generals who fought for him out of necessity, believing the previous revolution to be doomed to failure. Well, they were right then. This time will be different with enough convincing, we may be able to persuade some of them to join our cause. And we're probably soon going to go kaboom! We don't need more fuel for this. Did we at least build something here? No? Oh. Okay, so we got 15 days left. Actually, if only 15 days... Oh, we're not going to get that one done. Darn it. 50 days? Oh my goodness, 50 days. That's so long. That's so long. Uh, Patsushenko has been elected general secretary. And we are at 7 days left. 0.53, King Morissette Discret. He must be removed. If you like to read about him, please go right ahead, but... You know what I do like about uh, Equestrian War? It tells you who, do, who did the portraits. Bunny Shrubby, if you're watching this, thank you very much. I doubt he is, but the revolution. In a stunning display of boldness in Ilan, a former exile Theodore Verani returned to Aquilia. An army of Aquilian peasantry informally hidden supporters at his back and stormed the royal palace, capturing the king and proclaiming the creation of the Second Aquilian Republic as both the Aquilian Republican army and socialists fought the Aquilian military and the streets themselves. The time will tell what this means for the country as it falls once again into bloodshed. Long live the Republic. Oh, look at all these extra divisions. Nice, 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 nice. So you guys. Well. Um, are these guys still... Oh, we're still technically together. 
So now we can do a step over here, I believe. Yes. Aquilian remilitarization. Aquilia has been infirm for too long, and soon and after the recent traumatic events, it is clear that we can no longer rely on anyone for protection but ourselves. Whatever awaits in the coming years, Aquilia will face all challenges as strong as it has ever been. Open the military development tab. Ooh, I, I did see this one off screen as well, so a little bit, so that looks actually pretty cool what we can do with that. Oh, uh, Suel, Suel, Moonshadow, and we're all led by Rodier, Victor Moro, Planning Speed. Uh, yeah, let's get more planning. planning. I don't know who's going to join us here, so I don't trust anybody. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Something like that maybe to begin? I don't know. Something like that, and then you guys go over there, and then you go over there or something? I don't know. We'll see. And Panzer Leader. Yeah, why not? Let's take an Aquilian rip. Oh, hello! Ah, we got Rila with us as well. Committee of Public Safety. Nice. Alright, so you guys went to war with us. Oh, would you look at that? Uh, did you guys join us or... Hmm. Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Can you guys actually just go straight on in? Oh! There they go. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so now we got this. Oh, are they... Oh, is that, is that a completely separate entity? It might be. Huh. So, everyone else is... Oh, yeah. We're still part of the Entente. That's pretty nice, actually. I really wonder if we could just go in and just kill them all off. That would be pretty awesome. Well, you guys just focus on this group here. Well, don't do it like that. There you go. I guess we call our allies in, right? All right, very nice. It's it's a revolution. I've always, we always saw this every single time we play a quest war, but I just never knew what it did. But the royal execution. The Republic claimed its grandest prize yet today with the capture and swift execution of the hated King Morissette. A daring raid last night saw the royal palace seized just before the break of day, and King Morissette was captured before he could slip out of a hidden passage in his bedroom. The king was immediately taken to his throne room in Irons, where the council had set up a court to try him for the, from the room where he once condemned thousands of revolutionaries to their deaths. With his words alone today, however, the king seemed less interested in defending himself from his crimes and instead spewing insults at Theodora Verani, the Republic, and the Griffins of Aquilia, who had brought him to justice. He was swiftly found guilty by... A unanimous decision of the court, and was dragged to the town square to meet the guillotine that he claimed so many of her comrades. The royal continued to spill forth vile slander against the Republic, threatening his unending wrath were he not released, up until the moment the blade removed his head from his body. He had very little say after that, though. Unfortunately, the king's daughter Vivienne, Vivienne did not meet the same fate as her father. It seems there may have been a secret monarchist guarding her herself, either that. Or the harlot used her charms to seduce a weak-willed comrade and convince him to let her go free. Whatever the case may be, the hated discredit dynasty lives on, though with the king get dead. Vivian is likely to see her friends and supporters abandon her in the coming weeks. It's only a matter of time now. Thus, unto tyrants. Nice. Uh, these guys are here. We're probably going to lose this battle, so... I, I kind of want to keep them in place, but... I'll hold for now. we got to get our soldiers on here. Oh, Hello. If you find them, you can beat them up, right? Uh, you will, you're going to get counterattacked probably eventually. Not bad. Pretty good. And do we have actually any air bases? Do we have any planes? Oh, yeah, we do. We do. Oh, that's so nice. Fighters. Fighters. Tactical bombers. Oh, we have two aces, do we? Oh, that's really cool. What type of image is that, huh? All right, everyone. Would you like to participate? Thank you very much. Our line is kind of open, but that is not good. Whatever. Nice, nice, nice. I suppose you can help out here too, that's fine. Thank you. And you have one. Now I want to take out these guys. Oh, okay. Aquilian remilitarization. Setting doctrinal disputes. The, the Fierte Naval Reform. The third branch of the military. Uh, the setting, uh, settling doctrinal disputes. War has changed, and Aquilia must decide how it's going to approach the battlefield of the 11th century. The wars of the future will be the ones of industry and grand strategy, and we cannot delude ourselves into thinking old methods will still work. And what can we do with the political power now? War bonds, we get some war support, trade with them. No, we're pretty good. I don't mind getting a lick of fuel, though. Wing body? That'd be good. Nice. I mean, if we can go straight across, that is pretty darn awesome. Uh, just keep, kind of keep them in place for now. That'd be pretty good. Uh, maybe we should have attacked there, but that's alright. Man, look at how fast these guys move. I like it. We're all just like running, trying to run into each other, but we're not going to let them. 
Ah, oh, beautiful, my friends. Beautiful. You guys are doing pretty well up there, too. Not bad. Not bad, my friends. Not bad. Uh, I guess move over there. Uh, I don't really want to take over a river, but you can. Getting more soldiers over here to fight over here would probably be a good idea. So we can go here, here, and circle off. Oh, hello. Someone trying to naval invade? Oh, that's interesting. That's a lot of divisions right here, though. Oh, hello. If you could hold, that'd be great. Um, just gonna smooch them up. Smooch them up? Maybe not smooch them up. Oh, we're not making any divisions. I always forget to make divisions. Uh, so we have these guys. Knights are pretty good for uh, suppression. Pretty good for suppression. They are special forces, though. Infantry, they're only 12 combat with. Revolutionary Guard, too. I don't know if these guys are gonna be deleted at the end, so just train, like, three? Cool. Oh, that's not good. Uh, send down the tanks, just in case. Oh, they're still going to lose me a little bit. Alright, move on in then. So happy you guys too. And kab kaboom. Kaboom? Kaboom. A pencil. Oh, sure, we'll take some stuff. Nice. Ooh. You might just be able to go a little crazy and actually go this way. You might be able to circle these guys as well. The doctrinal debate. By executive decree, the newly reformed Aquilian general staff has undergone intense internal discussion about the reorganization of the army. An eclectic group of Civil War veterans, officers from the kings of De King Morset, and transfers from recently abolished branches of the old royal army have risen to the occasion. Relaying spirited exchanges on weighty doctrinal matters through realms of memos and hundreds of meetings, both the official and otherwise. Our army, while fully full of patriotic spirit and stalwart soldiers, needs direction and purpose if it is to perform its functions well. Thankfully, it seems that the debate is finally coming to a consensus. Large, well-trained general staff can coordinate operational planning, Powerful weapons and an immense volume of fire is a key. Aquilia must have capable tanks of its own to defeat our rifles. The strength of our nation has always been our people. Eh, we'll go try to intrude superior firepower. That's pretty normal, so. Uh, that's not bad. Milk tanks. I, I want to get the extra factory, so we'll go and get that one. The tank is a weapon still in, if it, in its infancy, but it's already shown its potential. If we make sure to fund the development of this peculiar vehicle, we can well place ourselves in a position to become the masters of tank warfare across Grifonia. Very nice. Oh, they're still attacking us, though. Did we get it? Oh, baby boy, that's not bueno. Oh, you guys are getting attacked as well, so. Now they're definitely coming out with much more force. Oh, boy. So it is 1008. Let's grab some more output, shall we? And we freed ourselves, which is very good. In the meantime, I want you guys to go up here. You probably will struggle quite a bit without doing too much. And you guys are struggling over here. Uh, you might actually be able to encircle them anyways. Do that. There you go. Uh, do we have any other air bases close by? No, that kind of sucks. Yeah, that kind of really sucks. But whatever. Just don't lose across the river there. That'd be, you know, bad to lose that. So, yeah. Please go in there. Please, 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 please. If not, keep going. Oh, these guys are dead. Look at that. That's pretty nice. Support weapons one. Very good. Let's not grab that and grab some artillery now. I, I made sure we did not grab that yet just because I want to make sure that we can actually kill the enemies off. Uh, you guys go there then. Give them more support. You're still getting attacked down there. Nice. And these guys have been encircled. Nice. Good stuff, guys. Goodbye. Awesome. Uh, we might want to help out up here. We've got guys encircled here, guys. That's not very smart. Then again, it's the AI. What do you expect? Alright. We want to make sure that these guys don't die. So, there you go. Good luck. Changing to claim Olenia. Uh, what else is new? Good, good, good. Pridea will be the last one here. 16 visions is very nice, though. Incredibly nice to have. Olenia refuses to yield. Very nice. Head on into the capital. And they're gone. Uh, just for our own sake, we could puppet them, maybe. Is it worth... I mean, technically, they, they are... The Queen Republic, we do want them, so... I mean, eh, I don't know. I mean, the other group did do quite well, but... Technically, the second Aquilian Republic... Can I actually puppet them? Eh. I'm not sure if that'd be worth this, but... I don't know. We'll see. Because technically, we do have claims on all the territory here, right? And technically, it is a core of ours, so... That's nice. Don't get me wrong. But still. Are these guys forcing the attack or something? They might be, actually. Yakiyakistan? 
Nice. And what do we have here? A war bonds trade. Now nah, we're good. Uh, if we could break over here at first, that'd be good. And then have you guys come down like here or something. That'd be quite, quite bueno. Well, how many have we lost? We lost 3,000. 4,000 versus 46,000. Not bad. Research grants? Infantry weapons sound pretty good. The humble infantry, uh, infantry griff, has been at the center of warfare ever since Griffins took the, up the sword. There have always been those that outshine him, but there has never been anyone as important as him, making sure he's the proper weapons for his duties to strengthen the very foundation of our armed forces. Very nice. And actually, we could probably go here. Oh, no, we lost a guy. Oh, we're led by Theodore Vrandi. Nice. Well, I guess getting that political power guy was a waste of time. Let's do it again. Oh, there's got someone there, huh? Well, you still might be able to win, though. We'll see. Actually, if you just do general attack, you could probably still win, actually. Or you just do that. Or and we get encircled in, in the end, too. Well, that kind of sucks. Actually, that really sucks. Ah, screw it. Everyone just go ahead. Kill them all off. They're pretty much, pretty much, hold on, before they die, though, how much manpower do they have? Ah, Baron Dennis Discret. No manpower, so that makes, okay, so maybe they did the attack, maybe not. They just lost enough guys. Ah, Pradia. Actually, losses? 83,000? 86,000? Almost 100,000 has fallen to us, my friends. Ah. Now that's good. The successful revolution. The Fezerians return home. Now that the revolution has been won, many volunteers from Fezera are returning home, but not before receiving thanks and congratulations from the population and Varani himself. While they may have only provided some help, Aquilia will always remember their role in our war against tyranny. Travel safely. The triumphant revolution it has been a long and bloody road, but today, the last of the monarchist vassals have finally collapsed beneath the unstoppable tide of freedom. Thanks to widespread and organized revolutionary fervor and the countless valiant sacrifices of so many griffins, the supporters of the old monarchy have been crushed and the lineage of the discrets scattered to the winds. Though our enemies fought on to the bitter end, they've all been defeated on the field of battle. Their armies crushed and routed. A new generation of heroes will safeguard Achilia from those that would see the monarchy restored yet again, but with their help, Aquilia is free, and a new day dawns on us and our new republic. Long live the republic. All Rillen, Westkeep, Vinovian, Vinovian, and Pridean core states will become Aquilian core states. A lot more stability, political power, and the second revolution. Oh. Oh, do we want to get rid of that? Oh. I mean, yeah, I like the political power. Oh, that helps us get more political power, though. Oh, no! That gives us way more population. Oh, no! Let's do that one first. Oh, that sucks. But here we are. Not bad. We got we got bigger. We conquered our enemies. And I think I had a good time. I hope you guys had a good time doing that too. Look at that. Open the... Oh! Military decision interface. So, here's this one. This is actually really cool. Support development. Despite what may be thought about the infantry and armored tractors, the artillery and support wins a day. The rest of their soak damage. General Eagleheart advocates for a focus on improving the effectiveness of our artillery doctrine, along with an effort improving some of the more specialized sections of the army. Our stats will be increased by plus one. Support and military de development path will be unlocked. Or armor development. Immobile guns and legs still have their uses, but for smashing walls and barricades of steel and stone, there's no better tool than armor, an engine, and a big gun. Juno Altiert has been requesting funding for research and development efforts aimed at making Achillean armor equal to none on the battlefield, among the much needed doctrinal modernizations and infantry development. Whenever someone promotes tanks or guns over the venerable infantry, they should just know that no matter what, it's not yours until your infantry are on it and they're, and they're armed. And there's armed. Juno Gilbert wants the army to take a no-nonsense approach to the doctrine of improving fortifications, logistics, and opening up more positions within the armed forces to the killing, killing ponies. I kind of like support. I love, love artillery. And then we get this up. I don't really, I don't really understand this. White phosphorus bombardment. Do we get more... Of this, more attack for artillery. Mage, ooh, we, we, maybe we get some mage companies in. Oh, that's not too bad. And airborne armored companies. Cool. And then magical artillery. Ooh, what is that? So I guess we have to go with white phosphorus. Enemies cannot hit what they cannot see. Indeed, smoke makes for a very good cover to hide behind or attack under. And in compound, no compound makes for a better smoke screen than from fired from from artillery than white phosphorus. Oh, it takes 50 army XP. Oh, you just use army XP for this. That's not bad. White Phosphorus? Nice. Let's take a look at that, actually. Let's let time go on. Do we have it under Griffin Tax or something? Or... Tyrant is gone? I hope we get a fight. Uh, wing Body. Olenia Surrenders, which makes sense. Um, is there Special Tax somewhere? Engineering? They're not like an Old World Blues. They have their Special Tax, but... 
industry? No? Okay. The Mac? Mac 10? I hope it's a Mac 10. Oh, verbal. Alright, so that's done. The Queen of the Battlefield would be nice. But, the Second Republic. A victory at last once more, the monarchists of Achilles line shambles, chased from the country are placed six feet deep into the soil. The Second Revolution is won, and in brilliant fashion, and now it's time to formally establish a democracy we've long waited for. The Second Republic rises. Beautiful. Oh, since we're not at war, uh, do we want to mobilize? Uh, we can probably mobilize. That's probably really good to do. And we'll get some more daily army XP next. Alright, so we need a lot of things here. Gun-wise, bolt action rifles, we need to improve as well. What are we missing? Motorized and tanks. So I guess I could give you one, and I will give you four, because we want to maybe use them as support companies as well. Early fighters will be good as well as that. I think we're good for that for now. And we've got a few... Wow! Oh, we just annexed them! Wow! Okay, so you guys are pretty garbage, so we're going to convert you. You guys are okay. Not bad. But I like having pretty uniform stuff. That's not too bad, actually. That's actually exactly what we have, so... Oh, uh, there you go. Nice! A split in the party. With the liberty afforded to us through a new republic comes unfortunate disagreements over how the nation should be run. With a new election coming for the Second Republic, it seemed all but certain that Theodore Verani would lead the Har Harmonists and the FJA to victory instead. After several days of shockingly bitter and caustic debates, Theodore has decided to leave the FJA entirely, along with many of his supporters, no longer content to let his ideas for the Second Republic to be beaten into compromise by the FJA. Theodore has established his own party, which will run in opposition to the FJA in the coming elections. The Partai National de Aquila We'll focus first and foremost on balancing the nation's budget, repaying all the debts that the Republic incurred in the fighting, and stabilizing the economy to leave it strong enough to withstand the influence of monarchists beyond our borders. After his departure, the FJA is now struggling to find a griffin to unite them and guide them toward victory at the ballot box. It seems their inevitable victory is no longer so inevitable. Merde! Oh boy. Oh boy. Where did you go? Oh, if you like to read about him, please go right ahead. Oh. I apologize. I keep wasting political power. You know, you think... You get the person here, and then they stay here, but then they don't stay here. Are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? Oh, it's breaking my heart. Actually, do we have anything about a wing body? We have nothing about wing body here. Do we? Uh, or is it, uh... No, kingdom of wing body here. You know what? Champion of the people. As the various revolutionary clubs gear up to send their candidates off to champion their platforms in the upcoming election, the Socialist Pad Party has nominated Grand Cru to represent them before all of Achilles. Cru's nomination was expected not only as he is more moderate and thus more palatable candidate to come from the communists, he is also hero of the revolution, having sheltered many revolutionaries during the furious fighting for the capital, providing food and water for families displaced by the war from stockpiles set aside before the revolution, and organizing the downfall of organized monarchist resistance in the capital and the surrounding countryside. Now, with election day drawing ever nearer, Grand Cru has promised to continue the work he performed during the revolution by expanding his party and bringing regional representation to all the far-flung corners of Achilles. He even seeks to continue providing homes for families displaced by the war, a move sure to see him attain easy gains at the ballot box. Grand Cru presents an excellent look for the socialists and is sure to draw the votes of countless griffins throughout Achilles. But will he lead the pat along more moderate and sensible paths, or is he merely a face to let the more radical griffins inside his party take control of the nation? Hopefully they can keep all the loonies on their side. Or on the side. Oh, cool. <clears throat> the Second Republic, we are halfway through this focus. Yeah, that kind of sucks that we lost that guy to get more political power. But the Rose of the Novia. Well, the glorious Second Revolution had the unfortunate side effect of bringing desolation, destruction, and ruination to large swaths of the kingdom. The former Duchy of Vinovia, Vinovia was spared the worst of the carnage by well-known revolutionary by the name of Cecile Gaudreau. As chaos quickly engulfed the nation in the duchy, Cecile returned to her homeland of Vinovia. From exile and took command of the revolutionary cells operating there, urging for the valiant soldiers of the Republic to only fight those that still openly supported the monarchy. Her messages of harmony amongst even enemies had a remarkable effect on the fighting in v Vinovia, saw some of the least partisan bloodshed and extrajudicial killing in the entire Republic. Now, Cecile, whom the revolutionaries of Vino Via, called the Rose, has come to Achilles to champion the peaceful reconstruction of the nation. In the power vacuum left by Verani's departure, she has become the obvious successor as the leader of the FJA, having clashed with Verani on the same issues that caused the party split in their long history. Cecilia intends to breathe new life into the party by championing its founding tenets of harmony and social democracy. She seeks to foster cooperation between the different parties in Achilles, not competition, and is committed to the restructuring of Achilles' tax code and bringing the nation into a modern era with electrification for the countryside and modernized labor laws. But can such grand and peaceful plans and sway the fervent supporters of the revolution outside Vino Vinovia, only time will tell. Gaudreau shall lead Achilles into prosperity. Nice. 
and we'll probably talk about other two leaders as well. Rabble Rousing Griffin causes mischief. A voracious lover of life and dandy, Charles Beclair was well known in the artistic circles of Aquila for his rather divisive poetry. While the vocal minority considered his work to be a rejuvenation of art, far more considered than to be works of complete debauchery. The numerous lawsuits and charges of defiling public morals has not deterred Beclair from publishing more verses on themes of modernity, love, and wine. Additionally, he has taken it personally to confront his critics, causing multiple public brawls. This has resulted in many Griffins receiving serious injuries, as Beclair is overly fond of the bottle and great damage to public property. Recently, however, his brief stint in the prison has somewhat mellowed him out, yet his works continue to cause much controversy in the cafes of Aquila. 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 Artists are a rather special bunch, and the Maréchal. A lasting, a last surprising entrant has put his name before the Griffins of Aquila in a bit of becoming the president, Leonard Rodier of the MPA, the ultra nationalist who claims to have supported the monarchy in the years between the First and Second Revolutions, has stepped forward to champion the platform of his party, centered around nationalism and Achillean unity. The ultra nationalist Maréchal has unified Griffins far and wide who fear the influence of the nations surrounding our great republic and are looking for a strong leader to keep them safe. He champions the promotion of Achillean culture and the expansion of our urban centers, as well as getting the former nobility to fall in line and provide some of their wealth to the Republic through generous pardons. Though the loyalties of the MPA throughout the revolutions are certainly suspect, it is quite clear that they are too large of a force with too much influence to simply label as traitors and be done with it. Perhaps we shall see just where the ultra-nationalist loyalties lie and if they can truly court the votes of the loyal Republicans who brought us this grand victory. Wait, weren't they monarchists? Oh, more supremacists. We're very divided here. We overthrew one group, but now we're going to have another group that probably wants to overthrow us. Ah, revolutions. Alright, so you guys come over here because you can. And you all come over here too. Uh, doesn't really matter where. There you go. You can do it too. Just because I want to train all these guys up. And there we have it, my friends. The Achillean election. Once again, the Republic has toppled the monarchies of Achillea. And once again, it is time to choose our new president. With the revolution more secure than ever before, the monarchists are all but defeated, it is time for Achillea to come together as one nation and elect a leader. Griffins throughout the Republic are flocking to the ballot boxes, and in a joyous celebration of the Republican spirit, the polls are expected to be all but overwhelmed. Today is a momentous day in Achillean history, and though the four different factions all have their own ideas on how to strengthen the nation and move forward, only one can win. As the polls close at night and the official tallies are flown by wing to the capital, the Griffins of Achillea wake up the next morning and turn on the radios to hear that the PAT, the FJA, the MPA, or the PDNA manages to win the elections. Now, if you follow me at all, or you know you know how my episodes run, please let me know who do you think should win the elections: the PAT or just MPA, FJA, PDNA? We could get President Crew, attract Social Democrats, of course, make amends with the National Syndicalists. That sounds actually kind of cool. And we have this one as well. In different colors in uh, the descriptions. President Gaudreau, reach across party lines, work for harmony. Uh, it's not bad. Consumer goods goes down a little bit. Not bad. Ooh. Civilian factory construction speed. I do like that. Battle literacy. We have President Rodier, which is not bad. Illegally abolish the monarchy. Wrangle the party. Declaration of stuff down there. And then Academy Republics. Not bad. Again, the research slot. That's actually really good. Uh, repatriate the idol Aquilian. My, my French is so bad. Oh, boy. Not so bad. Or we could President Varani. Poach the deputies. Hero of the Republic. Reform the National Bank. And refine, redefine the Army budget. And which will determine, I guess, technically what we do down here. So I'm going to let you guys see this as well. The Shining Star of Socialism. Politicize the Unions. Achillean Civic Nationalism. Which is not bad. Amend Gun Ownership. I like that. Uh, and then we got that one, too. Invest in the People. Or United Achillea. Which seems kind of good. Anti-Monopoly Laws are pretty good. From the Jedame, Jedami, whatever, however you pronounce that. Integrate the periphery. Oh, you can actually core a lot of other people's stuff. Oh, that's actually really cool. Visions of greatness for more supremacy. Syndicates national, equilification faction, something like that. Liberty, egality, fraternity, nationality. The dream isn't dead as well. Armée Republican expansion plan. Very nice. You know, use political power. It is what it is. So I do want to know in the comments below. What do you guys think we should do for which direction? But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow in another video, or in the next one. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.